Okay guys, so I am back with part two of the word that I just put out. And um, like I said, this dream was actually cut into two parts. For those of you who don't know what the first part was about, I linked the video in the description box. So you guys can just go back and check that out when you have the time. And uh, okay, let's go without further ado, let's go right into it. So in the second part of the dream, it was as if everything around me was being made new. Everything was being replaced. Everything that was old was being replaced. So I had this computer, this PC, and the PC was being replaced. There was all this renovation going on in my home. Um, I think an, an extra story was added on to my home. So there was this whole new level on my home that was added. Um, fresh coats of paint. There was all this um, newness going on, a lot of new stuff happening around me in the dream. And um, there was this little boy, and um, that it, it, in the dream, he's my nephew actually in Waking Life. So I should just go ahead and say that. That was my nephew. My nephew comes up to me and he looks at the PC. And I haven't assembled all the parts yet because there was something to, there. there it was one of those. Um, PCs where you have to assemble the parts or something like that. And I hadn't assembled all the parts yet. And he took up an old keyboard and he was trying to attach it to the new monitor. And he said, why don't you just put the old keyboard on the new monitor? And I said to him, no, baby, that's not going to work. Did you guys catch that? I said, that's not going to work. All the new pieces have to fit together. So that is a whole word for somebody. But again, I reiterate, there was all of this newness in this place. And um, I recall feeling so excited. When I got to the top level of my home, the new level that had been added on, the new story that had been let on, it was on the top, top floor. And I remember I was in there, I was standing in um, my bedroom. And from my bedroom, I can see outside on the patio. And I can see the window and it, there were these really light curtains and they were just they were just floating on the breeze and it was a beautiful day outside. I could see from, from the window that it was a beautiful day and I was standing there and I was just thinking about my person, my kingdom spouse. And it was as if I knew he was coming to see me, like I was aware that he was coming to see me. And I had this thought, I was like, wow, everything is so new and all these renovations have been done. He may not even recognize the place when he comes back. When he gets here, he may not even recognize the place. But at least he knows where exactly to find me. And that was the thought that I had in the dream. And then um, later on in the same dream, it's like I was on the phone and I was talking to my person to my kingdom spouse and he was like it was as if he and I had made plans to see each other but I had to cancel the plans because something came up something work related or something like that came up and he was just on the phone and he was cooing in my ear and he was like oh I thought I was gonna see your beautiful self today I thought I was gonna see you today and he sounded disappointed over the fact that we could not meet but lovingly and understandingly so like he wasn't mad at me or anything like that like he understood and um I remember listening to, to him say that he thought he was gonna see my beautiful self today and he sounded a little bit disappointed and I was like oh you are you will so it's like right on the spot I changed my plans for him and then I woke up from the dream so basically guys all the new stuff all of the newness all I got to say to you, whoever this is for, new levels, new levels. The Lord is taking you. And as you guys would, ha would have heard me say about the dream, there was an extra story added to my home. There was an upper floor, an upper, upper floor added to my home. And similarly, in the first part of the dream where the guy built this, this um, balcony, so there is this emphasis on elevation, on you and your person being elevated. And this elevation will happen to you both before you even come back together or before you even meet if you haven't met your kingdom spouse yet. And it is going to be rapid because I remember that in the dream, all of this newness just happened all of a sudden. It didn't take within a day 
guys, I kid you not, within a day, all of the renovations were done and all of the new stuff was moved in. The new um, monitor, the new PC, all of these different stuff was just moved in in one day. And remember that I said to my nephew when he asked me, why don't you attach the old keyboard to the new monitor? I was like, no, 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 baby. <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that. You got to attach all of the new pieces to each other. So in this season that the Lord is taking you into, the old stuff isn't going to work anymore. The old stuff isn't there. The old stuff, you, you can't take anything old with you into where the Lord is taking you. Okay, so new levels and um, it's going to happen rapidly and it's going to be for both you and your person. And also for the part where I was concerned that he might not, that my person might not recognize the place. Listen, sis or bro, whoever you are, God is going to make so many changes in your life that you're going to wonder, whoa, when my, when my person comes back or when I meet my person, are they even going to reckon? Because I don't even recognize myself with all of these changes. But hey. In the dream, I said to myself, you know what? He knows where to find me. So when your person comes back, if it's somebody that's coming back, they'll know that you're still the same person, the same humble person, the same God-fearing person, even though there are all of these changes, okay? And um, this person, if, he, if you don't know them yet and you're about to meet them, when this person comes into your life, they're going to appreciate everything about you, where you came from and where you are currently and where you're going. They're going to appreciate everything. They're not going to be taken back by anything. Okay. And also the Lord put emphasis on, um, roses or pink flowers. There's this emphasis on the color pink, like pink flowers. Somebody's going to receive pink flowers from their kingdom spouse. And he led me to Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among the thorns, so is my love among the daughters. So for whoever this is for, your person, if it's someone that you're waiting on to reconcile, sis, bro, this person thinks the world of you. And if you haven't met them yet and you're about to meet your kingdom spouse, when they meet you, they will think the world of you. They will think that you just stand out among the crowd. You're not like everybody else. And um, the Lord is also putting an emphasis on rest. Whoever this is for, you have been working your finger to the bone. You've been working really hard. You have been trying to get, maybe you're trying to get your business off the ground. Maybe you're working really hard at your job. The Lord is putting emphasis on rest and he's talking about green pastures. I literally had a dream the other day where there was this family and they were laying down on what looked like this lawn. This um, It was a lawn and it was beautifully kept. I mean, the grass was just green and it looked like something out of this world. So he's leading me to Psalm 23, verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So rest. In addition to that, the Lord has spoken to me about sending you a supporter a protector. This person can come in the form of your kingdom spouse, or it could come in the form of a trusted friend that the Lord is going to bring into your life. Somebody who's going to be a big supporter of yours. Going back to the cheerleaders, this person is going to be your biggest cheerleader. If it's someone that's coming back to you, it's a kingdom spouse that's coming back and you guys are going to reconcile. This person is going to be your biggest cheerleader, your biggest supporter. Okay. And also the Lord put emphasis on riches, on wealth. So again, going back to the dream where there was all this leveling up going on, the Lord is about to level you all the way up. So if you're concerned about your finances right now, you're concerned about how you're going to make ends meet, the Lord is saying that he has an answer for that. He's about to give you riches beyond what you could imagine. And it may not look like anything like that in the natural right now. It may be hard for you to believe because of the fact that in the natural, it doesn't look anywhere close to that. But the Lord is saying to you that despite your doubt, he's still going to do it because he is God. He is real. And when he makes a promise, he keeps it. So whether or not you think or you believe that it's going to happen, oh, it's going to happen because the Lord said so. Okay. And he's reminding you that when you get these riches to stay humble. Because he was with you even when you were in the valleys of your life. So he's putting you on the mountaintop and on the hilltop now. But he's reminding you that he was God even when you were in the valley. 
So you need to continue to be humble when he puts you in this elevated place. Okay. And he led me to one Kings chapter 20, verse 28. The man of God came up and told the King of Israel, this is what the Lord says, because the Arameans think the Lord is a God of the hills and not a God of the valleys. I will deliver this vast army into your hands. So he's basically saying to you, it is time to pray for your enemies because they are going to be under your feet. All of the naysayers, all of the people, all of the people who did not think, didn't believe in you, didn't think that you were going to get anywhere. Some of them actively tried to prevent you from getting from point A to point B. They're going to be under your feet now. So you need to pray for them. And he led me back to to Haman and Mordecai, where Haman was so close to the king, but Haman didn't want to see the marriage between Esther and the king actually prosper. And he led me to Esther chapter 8, verse 15. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple, and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. And that's another thing. There is all this emphasis on the color purple. And guys, you know the color purple represents, it represents royalty, it represents wealth, it represents nobility, it also represents loyalty to Almighty God. And the other day, I was minding my own business and I just saw a flash of a purple vehicle pass near me and I was like, whoa, and I got so excited. And I was like, why am I getting excited? I, the color purple isn't even my favorite color. Why am I getting excited when I see this? But that was the Lord quickening my spirit because somebody needs to get excited. Your status, your financial status is about to greatly change for the better. You're going to be rich. I'm not talking about just having enough. I am not just talking about having a little bit extra left. No, sir, no, ma'am. You are going to be rich. That is what the Lord is saying. But he's emphasizing that you need to stay humble when this happens. Do not forget when you were in the valley. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. And one other thing. There is someone who is doubting, even though the Lord has sent you multiple confirmations, you are doubting that this person is your kingdom spouse. And I'm feeling in my spirit that it's a woman. <laughs> okay. Um, the Lord, what the Lord did in this dream is that he actually spells out the word husband for me and gave me the whole definition. Listen, guys, the dictionary definition of what a husband is. This is what this, this is what almighty God did. And I had to laugh. I was like, okay, God, somebody hard headed, huh? We got a hard headed person, huh? So sis, whoever you are, hard headed woman of God, that man is your husband. Okay. Stop doubting. I don't care what it looks like in the natural. That man is your husband. The Lord done spelled out the whole word for me, the whole word that says husband and gave me the dictionary definition. Okay. <laughs> and I had to laugh. So says whoever you are, please stop doubting. That man is your husband. Okay. So, um, that's all I have for this word. I do hope that this blessed somebody and I will be back with another word as soon as the Lord releases me.